All right, good evening, everybody. Welcome to Community Focus here on Channel 6 TV. I'm Kenny Fogel, your host tonight. Glad you could join us. We'll talk about something that near and dear to the heart of just about everybody in our listening audience, Nelson County, and in any other place that happen to be listening in, is our mental health. And mental health is a condition that, uh, you know, we talk about health all the time, but mental health is something that we either don't talk about a lot, but it's something that probably affects us more so than anything. And I've got, I'll say one of the top of gurus here in Nelson County is Roland Gabbard as far as when it comes to the subject of mental health. Roland, welcome to the show. Thank you. All Good right. to be here. And before we get started, tell <clears> us a <throat> bit about Roland Gabbard so people know exactly who we're talking to. Oh, uh, well, I've been in practice uh, for uh, about 38 years. And uh, I know I don't look that young, but <laughs> <laughs> or old. <clears throat> anyway, I've been... Uh, practicing here in in Bardstown and also in Louisville uh, for that many years uh, in different practices but um, we are now located over here on uh, Stephen Foster mm -hmm. and uh, we have a number of therapists over there at our office that uh, are excellent therapists that uh, work with us so well mental health issues have been around for a long long time and it seems mm -hmm. like we, but it seems like I don't know if we just call it a crisis now but it seems like it's coming to the forefront more and more. People are actually either talking about it more, acknowledging it more, or it's something that we're starting to actually treat. So you've seen this, the evolution of mental health over the last three decades or so. Where are we at right now? I mean, are we getting better as far as recognizing that uh, mental health is becoming an issue that we need to start facing a little bit more? Well, that's an excellent question, but, um, you know, in the 38 years I've been practicing, i would say that it has uh, changed dramatically, but I don't know that it's gotten a whole lot better, yeah. uh, honestly. I wish I could say that it had, but um, uh, the access to mental health care is one thing that has concerned me over the years. And, um, you know, insurances are, are really uh, tough to deal with. Um, but I think the aspect of people um, having less of a stigma associated with mental health uh, services, that has changed dramatically over the years, mm -hmm. uh, Kenny. And uh, one of the things I've noticed is that, for example, it used to be that very few men came in for therapy. Mm -hmm. And now <clears throat> I would say at least half of the people that I see are men. And uh, so that, that aspect of it is good. And uh, the access to therapists, many people come in to see therapists that maybe wouldn't have yeah. 20 years ago, for example. Well, what I've noticed, uh, talking to doctors and therapists and, and different people, and I know doctors are telling me they're prescribing uh, antidepressants more and more now. It's going to be pretty common. And getting in to see a therapist is going to be difficult because I don't know about you in particular, but most of them I've talked to, they've pretty much got all the patients they can handle. They do, and that's very unfortunate, and uh, there's been some changes even here in Nelson County that have uh, made that more difficult. Uh, we have uh, no psychiatrist. Uh, we have some nurse practitioners who are able to prescribe medications. Uh, <clears throat> I kind of uh, have uh, changed a little bit over the years in terms of whether medications are, are necessary in every case. I don't think they are. <clears throat> But they are certainly absolutely necessary in, uh, in certain situations of major depression, bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, you know, um, anxiety disorders, those kinds of things. Now, I'm going to ask you a question that's going to sound very elementary because I come from a lay person. But what is it that you can do as a therapist without medication or anything else that can make a difference in somebody's life? I mean, you know, you know the right questions to ask, you know the right feelings to touch upon. What is it that you do that you're trained and specially can do? Well, there's, um, there's a variety, of course, of, of different uh, um, theoretical or um, treatment approaches that uh, people use, therapists use. Uh, I happen to be one that uses mostly uh, what's called cognitive behavioral therapy. Mm -hmm. And that's been shown to be one of the most effective, uh, Kenny, that uh, is out there. Um, it's been around a while, uh, quite a while. Um, and that is where one uh, takes a look at the way they think about things, the way they, uh, have, they have to examine kind of their uh, 
typical automatic thoughts that uh, come to them that uh, have been rooted in their childhood and <clears throat> try to redirect those thoughts in a more positive, more constructive way. So that's what, uh, you know, that simplifies it, but that's basically what we try to do. Okay, well, and what I want to talk a little bit about, obviously, is the state of mental health. I mean, as you say, it really probably hasn't changed that lot over the years. We're probably recognizing it more, but drug issues are becoming more of a issue, and people are uh, recognizing depression and anger issues. That before, it really wasn't considered a mental health issue. You were just depressed or you were just angry. Yes. Now, all of a sudden, now there's a label attached to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and of course there's diagnoses for just about everything, um, and uh, I try to stay, again, a little bit away from uh, that, unless I have to do that for insurance purposes, mm -hmm. But because uh, I don't like to label someone as this or that, yeah. and uh, then they kind of get pigeonholed, uh, sometimes for the rest of their life. So you, they go on to another therapist, oh, they were a, a paranoid schizophrenic, so then, you know, they carry that label onto that person, yeah. you know, and they just automatically think, oh, okay, I'm treating a paranoid schizophrenic. Uh, <clears throat> so, yeah, I would say that, uh, you know, it does cover a wide range right now in terms of anger, for example, people uh, from the courts here in Nelson County are often referred for, you know, mm -hmm. treatment of those kinds of issues. Uh, but that's very, very important because sometimes it has a deeper root rather than just, oh, he's an angry person, mm -hmm. or she's an angry person. It has, it, it could be bipo bipolar disorder. That's one of the symptoms of bipolar disorder is, uh, you know, just that aggressiveness or that mm -hmm. outburst or that impulsive behavior. Yeah. So, <clears throat> uh, yeah, it's, it's a very, courts are very cognizant of it. Well, I feel like we've on. all got a touch on it. I mean, you can see me during a basketball game. I mean, <laughs> I'd definitely be diagnosed something. I don't know. Uh, well, maybe I should go over there and watch it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not saying. <laughs> but, okay, what are we talking about as far as uh, what can we do to improve? I mean, you talked about access before. Do we need more psychologists? Do we need more psychiatrists? Do we, is there is there is this college is putting out more or are people just not going in that profession? They're not going into that profession because it, uh, on the scale of um, metal, medical practitioners, that is probably one of the lower uh, paying mm -hmm. positions. And that leads to another problem which uh, has grown over the years, which is for psychiatrists, for example, to make a decent uh, living uh, they have to see people short periods of time, yeah. um, find out the briefest amount of information in the shortest amount of time, and then make a d quick decision, change medication, keep it the same, stop it, start it. And um, they don't really, many psychiatrists don't do much therapies, mm -hmm. th therapy, but some do, but a lot don't. They just quick 15 minutes, 15 minutes, 15 minutes. Um, so, and we have some practitioners, nurse practitioners here in town that, um, I think there's two that are doing psychiatric work and they're able to prescribe medications uh -huh. and, um, provide some services here in town. But, you know, it really would be great if we had a, a full-time psychiatrist here in our, in our community. <clears throat> It's just never, uh, well, we've had uh, Dr. Pointer. He was here for mm -hmm. a while, and he's, of course, uh, retired now, but, um, and that was a, a big help Yeah, for I us. talked to a lady from Communicare a few weeks ago in, in here, and she said they'd done everything they could to beg people to come to Elizabethtown, even Elizabethtown. I know it, I know it, it's yeah. Just not being able to attract a psychiatrist. Yeah, uh, it's very difficult, yeah. So, uh, you know, it's, it's a system that, frankly, uh, Kenny is broken. Mm -hmm. I, I think it is. That's my opinion. Uh, it needs to be fixed. Um, we need to do something to change the way we approach mental health. And I think uh, actually the way things are going in terms of uh, health care, it's going to make it even harder mm -hmm. because the people who have drug problems, who have other mental health problems, um, who need help may not be able to get that in the near future. So we're concerned about that 
aspect of it. I know well. there was an issue with the uh, Affordable Care Act and even with the new act there that's uh, coming through Congress right now. There was an issue at one time of trying to put more money into the mental health field, but I don't know where that ever <clears> ended <throat> up at. Well, more money did go into the mental health field, but now I think there's going to be less access to it. And the people that, uh, many of the people that really need that uh, care yeah. are probably not um, going to get that. So that's what we're really concerned about, and that's what we're urging Congress to try to, you know, remedy. Uh, because, you know, if you don't take care of things at that level, um, you, it just mushrooms into other problems. Yeah, well, my theory, and it's just a theory with me, is I say a huge percentage of people sitting in prison today are not there because they're criminals. It's there they're because they've had mental health issues of some sort that... Uh, not compelled them to do something, but it's uh, it's difficult to function in the in the in the world when you've got mental health issues to grapple with. You're right. Um, I would say well over fifty percent of the people that are in prison uh, have uh, psychiatric problems. Either most of them have substance abuse problems, mm -hmm. and the other uh, large percentage are uh, abused as children. So they've either been, they've either had a brain injury as a result of physical abuse, yeah. or they've been, uh, they have other psychiatric issues as a result of both emotional and verbal abuse, so, and sexual abuse. So you, you know, you throw all of that together and, um, you know, that has the makings of someone who's going to uh, commit crimes or, or just be lost out there in society, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Well... I know this is a very simplistic answer, but uh, if somebody out there is listening right now is, is, is struggling with a mental health issue, what's the first step they should be taking right today? Um, well, uh, that's a tough question to answer. It seems like a simple uh, question, but um, the first thing, I guess, you know, if they can't afford mental health services, then they would need to... Um, probably work with a local um, community mental health center. Mm -hmm. And uh, so there is access to um, care there. And if they have uh, insurance, then there's, a, there's really a large number, believe it or not, of psychotherapists here in Bardstown. There's more than I would expect a small town would uh, yeah. manage to, I don't know if we have more problems or <laughs> more therapists, I'm not sure which. But either way, um, you know, uh, they, they would just, I would say, check your insurance, look on the back, there's usually a mental health number, mm -hmm. uh, call that number, find out who's on your provider list, and then, um, then ask your doctor or your minister or someone, priest, who, someone who might know some of the people in town and get a recommendation. Because I, I just wouldn't want to go into see a therapist blindly without knowing something about their background or mm -hmm. their experience and so forth. Okay, so I guess the, what we, we mainly want to talk about the state of mental health, and right now it's not not as good as we'd like for it to be. And as, do you see not. any improvement on the horizon, or it's going to what, what's going to ha what are we going to need to do to improve mental health conditions and just say Nelson County alone? Mm. Well, um, I think one thing would be to uh, Perhaps we could find a way to recruit uh, either a psychiatrist or uh, another uh, person who might be able to, like a nurse practitioner that mm -hmm. uh, could uh, provide services. Um, because like you said, they, they have difficulty in E-Town, um, mm -hmm. you know, getting that person. Um, I think we have, probably have enough therapists, but it, I, I would say we could probably have a have more therapists here in this uh, county. Mm -hmm. um, and they could be spread out maybe more, you know, Bloomfield, Nel uh, New Haven, uh, mm -hmm. uh, the different uh, Boston, all these different uh, townships around us. You know, I think that would be better served if we could do that. Um, and, you know, uh, we don't advertise, so I would say that uh, it would be something also helpful to put that word out there. Uh, for example, um, I know you're familiar with NAMI, mm -hmm. and <clears throat> NAMI is a, a, a local, well, it's, it's actually a national uh, organization that uh, 
deals with mental health issues of families and um, they do advertise some but um, or get their word out but well, we just need to educate the public more as, as to the and that's what we're going to try to do here that's all part of what we're, the, the series we're going to be doing here now hopefully have somebody on here from NAMI the National Association of Mental Illness very soon to come on and talk again we had some out from Communicare a few weeks ago and uh, mm -hmm. Again, we're trying to at least get the issue out in the open in the world so people right. know what to do because mm -hmm. I think a lot of people are feel isolated. A lot of times they, they feel mm -hmm. they know there, there's something going on in their life that, that, that's not really comfortable and they just don't know where to turn. That's true. That's true. And, um, you know, there is somebody out there that can help you. And uh, the part you were talking about with isolation, that's, that's one of the keys. We, in fact, that's one of the things I suggest to, to my clients is, you know, socialization, exercise, and, you know, the therapy. Those three things are, mm -hmm. uh, and if you need medication, then, you know, we'll find someone to get your medication. Unfortunately, uh, uh, PCPs or the family doctors are the ones that have to be, you know, burdened with that mm -hmm. uh, job mostly. They're the ones that prescribe a majority of the antidepressants. Yeah, you know? and they're not really trained in that area. They're not trained in that area. I'm not saying they're not doing a good job, because yeah. many of them do, but many of them don't really know those kinds of yeah. medications like a psychiatrist would, who has that specialization, has long training in that area. Well, Roland, I know you've got patients to see today and things to do, so I don't want to hold you up any longer, but we do appreciate you stopping in here. Oh, it's my privilege. And again, anytime we can bring a mental health issues to the highlight, and I know you're working at it every day, and, uh, and thank God the people out there like you are, mm -hmm. so uh, we need all the help we can get. Yeah. Well, thanks for having me. Well, thank you for having you here today. Okay. Roland Gabbard here with the, uh, he's a psychologist here with the, our therapist here in Nelson County area, and again, if you need help, Reach out to somebody and see if you can uh, get hold of a therapist, a doctor, somebody, because we all, all need a little help sometime every now and then. So uh, we're here for you, so don't feel like you're all alone. So stick around. A lot more to come here on Community Focus here on Channel 6 TV. We'll be right back.